Hello. So today we're carrying on with the Sermon on the Mount. We are halfway through chapter seven. Um, yeah, I'm loving the fact we're getting to go into this teaching of Jesus in so much detail. It's really inspiring and encouraging. And today we're just going to look at one verse. So we'll start with that. It's Matthew 7 verse 12. So in everything, do to others what you would have them do to you. For this sums up the law and the prophets. Such a short verse, perhaps a verse we're familiar with, a verse that's out there in the world, perhaps without people even realising that they're living by something that has come from Jesus, that are his words directly. And it's often referred to as the golden rule. And we can look at it as a verse that kind of sums up all that Jesus stands for, all of his teaching um, in a way in terms of how we should live and how we should treat other people. And there was one commentator that I was reading and looking into this week that says, basically, this verse just helps us if we're faced with a situation where we feel God hasn't said be one way or another, apply this verse. And that doesn't mean God doesn't want to speak into our exact circumstances and the situations that we're in and the things we, we need to deal with. But actually, this just helps us. It sums up if ever we're in doubt, do this. Treat others as you would want to be treated. Treat others well, no matter what situation we're facing let's live that way and it might sound yep yeah, I can do that that's yeah rolls off the tongue we know it maybe if we've if we know our bibles well or have been around kind of faith for a long time but Jesus starts this verse by saying so in everything and that I think adds even extra weight to this it doesn't mean this is a verse that applies when we're feeling good when we're feeling positive when it's people we like that we're having to deal with when it's people that are nice that will treat us nicely in return that we need to treat in this way Jesus says in everything whatever situation whoever we are with outward internal external whatever it is it isn't just things people can see it's what we're thinking and feeling inside as well in everything treat others as you would wish to be treated. And we can look back in the Old Testament and there were similar ideas around this that was in the law given to Moses and in what the prophet said. But Jesus puts a different spin on it. If we go back to a lot of those phrases that are similar to this or, or, or of a kind of similar nature to this in the Old Testament, they were often quite negative or written in a way that was do not harm others, do not do evil, do not do things that will hurt other people. Those kind of phrases, I'm paraphrasing here rather than quoting directly, but it would be from that negative, don't do that, don't do that, don't be that way. Whereas what Jesus is trying to do is, as he explains, this is to fulfil what's already gone on before, it's to sum up the law that has already gone on before. But instead of it being do not, He's encouraging us to actively do, to actively do good, to actively pursue loving others, to actively pursue treating others well. R that rather than it being a do not, it's a do. And actually, Jesus is, is encouraging us here to be take the precedent with it, to not wait to see how, what other people do or how other people treat us, but for us to do that first not being reliant on others or what they will do, but for our actions to be determined through the way Jesus has encouraged us, that we should be treating others this way, not waiting to see how they respond, that we should take the lead, that we should show the way with this. And that needs to be regardless of how someone else acts towards us, how they might treat us, our actions, our treatment of others should not be determined by other people, but should be determined by what God is asking of us and by what Jesus says right here. 
and I think this is quite hard to get our heads around. If we feel we've been mistreated by someone, they've not treated us kindly, they've not treated us with love. Potentially, we will treat them in a different way. Things that have gone on in the past will determine how we treat someone in the future. And yet we go back to that in everything at the start of this verse. In other words, whoever it is, anyone, everyone, we should treat them the same. In any and every circumstance, we should treat people this way. Whatever our mood, that can often change how we treat someone. Whatever the circumstances going on around us also can affect how we treat someone. Whatever we need to choose to treat others in this way. The more we unpack this, the more I've spent time thinking and praying on this this week. It's made me realise how much harder it is than how it just sounds as we read it out there from the verse. If how we treat others is dependent on how they've treated us in the past or how we think they will treat us in response to what we do, really links in to the verses we looked at at the start of Matthew 7 on judgment. And Jesus showed us there that, yes, we can choose to judge, but it's our choice. And if we choose to judge, we need to understand and realise we will be judged in the same way by God. And actually, are we blameless? And as we looked at that those few weeks ago, we looked at the idea of the fact we are all covered by God's grace. We all need God's grace. And for me, holding the tension between that and this verse can really help us because we can see that actually we all live under God's grace. We all need God's grace and that shouldn't determine how we treat someone. We should treat everyone the same way and treat people well. As I've already mentioned, this isn't just about our outward actions either, how we treat people comes from inside, doesn't it? And as we know, God is a God of the heart. His saving grace is all about love, is all about loving us. And God wants us to love people and for how we treat people to come from that place, that our motivations, our thoughts towards people, that may determine and show our actions are for people, are for treating people well and that will have an impact on us it will change our heart for others no matter what's gone on before or what will go on after how we choose to treat them and then the other side of this verse is something that actually can be a bit of a trap for us and I think it's often how the world looks at this verse and how it applies it rather than how we're seeing it through the eyes of Jesus and what he means for us. And that is this idea of life being about self-service. We could approach this verse by saying, well, this is how I want to be treated. So because I want to be treated this way, I will treat others that way because it will mean I'll get it back. However, we need to really read this verse in the context of who Jesus is and the rest of his teaching, in that we need to put others first. We need to love others before we perhaps think so much of ourselves. We need to be living this verse out with humility as well as love and understanding and knowing that living out this verse is going to cost us and that we will choose to live it regardless of that cost rather than it being self-serving we need to see this is about how we treat others not what we can get out of it Jesus isn't just encouraging us to live with the absence of evil and wrong he's encouraging us to live in his presence to live putting our trust in him that he's going to help us treat people in the right way, that he will help our motivations, our actions, our treatment of others, our thought of others, our love for others. And it will come from that place of relationship with him, that we want to see others benefit from how we treat them. 
but most of all that we want to see people come into that relationship with God. Jesus knew this verse would be a real challenge, would be difficult for us. But what is amazing about God is his grace covers us. Jesus knew there would be some days we would get this easy and some days we would find this really, really hard, even if it's treating people well that we love. He knew we wouldn't always get it right. And his grace means we get as many second chances as we need. So do not be discouraged, but be encouraged today to keep trying to live this way, to keep trying to treat others in the way God wants us to, in everything. Knowing we won't always get it right, knowing that we won't always be giving the glory to God in how we are, but knowing God will keep giving us a second chance to keep going again, to keep trying again, to live this way, not for our benefit, but for the benefit of others. And so others can see the glory of God and the love of God through how we live. Be encouraged today. Let's keep trying to live this way in treating others well. God bless and see you really soon.